There are two major updates in the Kyle Rittenhouse case, and I'm covering both of them right now. First, Kyle has parted ways with attorney John Pierce. John was brought on early on in this process by Lynn Wood, and he seemed poised to take on the actual defense case for Kyle. Now, eventually, he ended up not participating in those Uh, in the defense of Kyle, and they hired local counsel instead, local counsel who remains on the team. So it's important to note that the actual criminal case for Kyle Rittenhouse is still being handled by the same criminal attorney. John Pierce was instead put in charge of sort of the fundraising campaign for Kyle and uh, as custodian of the money that was coming in. He is the guy who actually went down and paid the bond amount for Kyle Rittenhouse. And we're going to talk about that bond thing in a minute. He is gone. And Free Kyle USA has made the announcement on Twitter on February 4th. It says, following the recommendation of attorneys and accountants everywhere, we've been offline for a few weeks to set up an independent, irrevocable trust strictly for the benefit of Kyle. John Pierce opposed that idea. It is clear that by doing so, we made the right decision. John Pierce was terminated by Kyle on Monday morning. His association with Free Kyle USA was also terminated. When we begin raising funds again, John Pierce has no involvement and is not connected in any way to the funds being raised. John does not speak for Kyle anymore. Now, John did put out a statement about this, graciously stating that he hopes that all clients, uh, both former and current clients, have happy lives and are get all of the representation and justice that they deserve. He has nothing negative to say about this. But John was under scrutiny from the beginning, and one of his critics is actually Robert Barnes. Robert Barnes is announced now as the replacement for John Pierce. He is joining Kyle Rittenhouse's team and will be uh, somewhat in charge of, I suppose, the fundraising aspect or the funds management aspect of the case. Robert Barnes has expressed uh, over and over again that Kyle is innocent, as he states even in this tweet kids innocent and everybody knows it. And this is a pretty good case for self-defense. In fact, when reading the actual charging document, in lots of ways that charging document contains several of the facts that a defense attorney will likely be raising in Kyle's favor. Calling into question the very nature of this prosecution. To me, it looks like an entirely political prosecution, not necessarily that they were opposed to Kyle specifically, but more in fact of trying to quell the ongoing unrest in Kenosha following the shooting of Jacob Blake, a shooting for which the police officer was exonerated for as Jacob Blake had a weapon in his hand and was in the process of committing at least one, if not multiple, felonies. That being said, Uh, Kyle was, of course, in Kenosha during the unrest that followed and uh, ended up shooting three people, killing two of them. He is charged and faces potential life in prison if found guilty. My personal belief is that he is not guilty based on a justifiable use of deadly force under Wisconsin state law. And it looks like a pretty straightforward case, but we'll have to see how this ends up working out. But of course, the other big news is in relation to the bond funding that was done by John Pierce, as now Kyle Rittenhouse, according to prosecutors, is quote unquote missing. And what they mean by that is that they do not know what address Kyle Rittenhouse is actually staying in. He is in a safe house somewhere in Wisconsin or Illinois. We're not entirely sure probably in Wisconsin, because I'm assuming he's under orders not to leave the state as part of his bond. But he is in a safe house, and it has not been disclosed to the court, which may seem weird, except in an extremely public, highly politicized, and highly tense uh, prosecution like Kyle's. Kyle is actually in danger if his location is public. And that has been a point of contention over his address since November. Now, this is only being filed now by the prosecution, and that is one of the criticisms that his defense lawyer has raised, that they actually discussed this address issue with the prosecution early on, suggesting that they did not want to publicly disclose the location of Kyle's safe house. Now, they asked for uh, the ability to file this under seal, but the prosecutors are opposed. 
the prosecutors are opposed to sealing the address of this uh, of Kyle Rittenhouse. And that to me is a little bit baffling. There doesn't seem to be any benefit in them opposing the sealing of his address. This is, again, a highly tense, highly politicized prosecution. And I believe that Kyle is fully in danger from several people, activists and uh, other groups around the area. Activists with a demonstrated ability to commit violence in an organized manner. I can't imagine that this should be opposed in any way. However, on uh, November 30th, they requested it would be uh, filed under seal and the prosecution opposed that. Only now, only now, they've known about this since November 30th, but only now are they actually saying that he is quote unquote missing because they cannot find him. And only now are they pushing to have his bond amount increased by an additional $200,000. And this, of course, is one of the state strategies in many prosecutions, especially high profile ones. Even if you can't ultimately find the person guilty, bleed them of resources, put them under extreme pressure, and basically ruin their lives. This is how the game goes in prosecutions, and the system is rigged against the defendant in many ways. That being said, uh, his attorney has opposed the bond increase and has laid out the reasons why they have not disclosed the address to the court, including their uh, discussions to file the address under seal. Hopefully, the court will be reasonable on this and will forego raising Kyle's bond amounts in this particular case and instead grant them permission to file the address under seal so that the court and the prosecution do know where Kyle is and are able to contact him and serve any notices upon him. But at the same time, his address would not be available to the public. That's a reasonable solution. And sometimes courts actually do implement reasonable solutions. There is no uh, right of the public specifically to know the address of Kyle Rittenhouse, though generally speaking, uh, court filings are transparent and courts are open. And that is the right. The right of public access to court records generally uh, favors transparency and non-sealed filings. However, if there is a credible fear uh, or a credible threat to someone, typically the court will grant it. So those are the competing interests that they will be arguing uh, over probably a motion hearing, and hopefully the court will come to the right decision there. I will be following along with all of the Kyle Rittenhouse developments as they occur. If you want updates on Kyle's court case, please hit like, subscribe, share, all of that stuff. Hit the little notification bell so you don't miss any videos so we can follow along. Until then, we'll talk soon. Peace. Peace.